Hello learners, welcome to Environmental Science Senior Secondary Course of NIOS. I am Neelam Gupta, Course Coordinator of Environmental Science. Welcome you in this program. Today we will discuss lesson 12, Disaster and Their Management of Module 4, Contemporary Environmental Issues. In our previous program, we have discussed natural catastrophes such as floods, drought, earthquake, tsunami happen from time to time causing immense damage to life and property. Disaster also caused by activities such as fires, accidents, epidemics are no less sudden than natural disaster and may be equally devastating. This program is part 2 of this lesson. During this program, we will discuss about man-made disasters such as fire, road, rail and air traffic accidents. We will also discuss industrial accidents in brief, few biological disasters such as epidemics as dengue. HIV and AIDS and mad cow disease. We will also discuss community and government level initiatives for disaster management. So the objectives of the program are certain disaster occur in nature by human activities, explain the causes, effect and management of fire, road, rail, air and industrial accidents as well as epidemics, explain the role of community and government in disaster management. Now come to the man-made or anthropogenic disasters. Anthropogenic hazards are those hazards caused directly or indirectly by human action or inaction. Bhopal gas tragedy in India on December 2, 1984 is the world's worst industrial disasters when the Union Carbide India Limited pesticide plant sprang a gas leak. Over 5 lakhs people were exposed to methyl isocyanate gas and other chemicals. Thousands of people died within the first hour of the leak, but estimates between 5,000 to upward of 16,000 resulted from the leak overall. This does not include other injuries survivors would endure such as blindness and organ failure etc. Next man-made disaster is fire. Fire can be natural that is forest fire or city fire or domestic fire. Domestic fire. Fires are event of burning something, they are often destructive taking up toll of life and property. It, it is observed that more people die in a fire than in a cyclone, earthquake, flood and other natural disasters combined. Fires are a great threat to forest and wildlife because they spread speedily and cause tremendous damage in a short time. In cities, fire breaks out in home, juggies, building, especially go-downs and factories. Fire can spread to a large area, many people may die and it may also cause environmental contamination of air, water and soil which may affect the crop, plants and animals and soil fertility. During summer months such fires results in casualties and enormous economic losses. <clears throat> there are numerous causes of fire. Some important ones are throwing burning matchsticks or cigarettes, responsibility, heating sources can cause fire in houses, example clothes may catch fire while cooking on kerosene stove or gas stove. Cooking accidents are ma major cause of fire at home. Fire can result due to unattended cooking. A short circuit in an electric wiring can cause fire, overheating of electric appliances, poor wiring connections use of substandard quality appliances can also result in a fire. Rubbish and waste material often lying on roadsides or near houses may catch fire when people throw burning matchsticks or cigarette butt. Storage and transportation of inflammable material or explosive chemicals without proper precautions may cause fires. These are the effect of fire. Deaths of humans and livestock may occur during, due to burning or serious injuries from fire. In rural areas, often the entire harvested crop stored in securely may catch fire and burn to ashes resulting in heavy loss to the owner. Now come to the management of fire. Obey fire safety rules and remember the evacuation route in case of fire. Keep and handle inflammable materials with utmost care. 
keep a fire extinguisher in the house and learn how to use it. When you leave home, make sure to shut off all electrical and gas appliances. Do not plug several devices into one socket. Keep matches away from children. Don't block access routes by cupboard or any furniture. In the event of a fire, call the fire department immediately. In the smoke filled corridor, crawl on all floors or on your belly as the smoke is less on the floor. Find at least two ways to escape from your home. Make sure that you remove all the waste material from workplace and home on regular basis. Hazardous materials such as paint, solvents, adhesives, chemicals or gas cylinders should be kept in separate storage well away from fire. Firecrackers on Diwali is a major cause of fire in our country. Use them carefully under supervision of elders. Next section is road, rail and tra air traffic accidents. First we will take road accident. Increased number of vehicles on road, violation of traffic rules, speeding and drunken driving and poor maintenance of road are some aspect of road accidents. Road network are developed for better connectivity and service. Increased number of vehicle violation of traffic rules, speeding, drunken driving and poor maintenance of vehicles as well as the off road are some of the main causes of road accidents. In order to avoid accident, some safety measures can be adopted. Look on either side of the road before crossing. Use zebra crossing while crossing the road by foot. Wear helmet while riding a two wheeler. Use seat belt provided in your car. Drive only if you possess a proper driving license. Be familiar with road markings and honor them. Maintain a safety distance from the vehicle in front. Don't jump lanes. It becomes difficult for other vehicles on the road to anticipate you move. Dip your beam whenever you spot an oncoming vehicle. Follow the maintenance schedule prescribed by the manufacturer. Overcome impatience, anger and intoxication during driving. Road is dangerous in case a mishap occurs, stay calm. In case of fire, try to get out as early as possible and don't worry about the baggage. Some of the common safety measures are don't be rash and don't try to overtake unnecessarily. The best way to be safe on roads is to follow lane driving. While driving, avoid sudden acceleration and Deceleration, replace the worn tire and faulty headlamps, check the tire pressure, radiator water, brake oil and fuel frequently. Here are some road safety measures on the road. Look at the figure, it shows few safety measures for road safety that is control speed, reduce drinking and driving, use helmets for bicyclists and motorcyclists, restrain children in vehicles. Improve children's ability to see and see, enhance road infrastructure, adapt your vehicle design, implement graduated driver licensing, provide appropriate care for injured children and supervise children around roads. Now come to the rail accidents. The most common type of rail accident is derailment due to human error, sabotage or natural landslide in a hilly track or fire. Rail accidents lead to, lead to large number of casualties and material damage. Indian railways incur heavy loss due to such accidents every year. Now come to the railway safety measures. At railway crossings, pay attention to the signal and the swing barrier. Don't get underneath and try to get across. In case of an unmanned crossing, get down from the vehicle and look at either side of the track before crossing. Don't stop the train on a bridge or tunnel where evacuation is not possible. Don't carry inflammable material in a train. Don't lean out of a moving train. Don't smoke in a train. Don't pull the emergency cord unnecessarily. Nowadays, many air accidents are happened. So next section is air accident. Air accidents may occur due to technical problems, fire, poor landing and takeoff, weather conditions, hijacking and bombing, etc. 
there are few air safety measures in the figure. Safety measures for air accidents are pay attention to the flight crew safety demonstration, carefully read the safety card in the pocket, know where is the nearest emergency exit and learn how to open it, always keep your seat belt fastened when seated, stay calm, listen to the crew members and follow their instructions. Before you try to open any emergency door yourself, look outside the windows. If you see a fire outside the door, don't open the, it or the flame may spread into the cabin. Try to use an alternate route for escape. Remember, smoke rises, so try to stay down if there is smoke in the cabin. If you have a cloth, put it over your nose and mouth. As mentioned in the beginning of this program about Bhopal gas tragedy, this was an industrial ex accident also. We will talk about detail, some detail of industrial accidents. Industrial accidents can be due to explosion, fire and leakage of toxic or hazardous chemicals and led to heavy loss of life and material. Leakage of chemicals and explosion may be due to human error, technological failure or geological hazard such as earthquakes, flood etc. Fire is an industry may result from human error or electrical fault. Here are the causes of uh, industrial accidents such as explosion, fire and toxic or hazardous material. Now come to the effect of industrial accidents. Explosion or fire or leakage of corrosive chemicals severely damage structures. If the chemical is in gaseous form, the geographical spread is fast and wide. Many people may die either due to mechanical damage from explosion or fire or due to toxicity of the poisonous chemicals. The routes of exposure to chemical release from an accident are from inhalation, eye exposure, skin contact and ingestion. The polluting agents can have both immediate or long term effect. The immediate effects include death or other symptoms like dizziness, headache, irritation etc. The long term effect may include cancer, heart failure, brain damage, dysfunction of immune system, deformation, genetic disorder or congenital that is birth by birth disorders in children. Now come to the management of industrial accidents. It is important to have an inventory of hazardous chemical along with their quality, storage locations, characteristics along with possible hazards associated with hazardous chemicals and this informed all employees and people living in the neighborhood should living in the neighborhood should inform about the potential risk. The inventory as far as possible high risk areas demarcated and displayed along with indicating affected zone and safe routes for evacuation in the event of emergency. Industries should not be sited in residential areas, a large buffer zone in form of a green belt for separating an industrial area from residential area. Community preparedness, the community should be aware of the hazardous installations and know how to combat the situation. Members of the community should monitor the potential risk and participate in safety training organized by industries. Other measures, limit storage capacity of the toxic chemicals, improve firefighting capability, warning systems and measures for preventing pollution dispersion, develop emergency relief and evacuation planning for employees in nearby settlements, adopt insurance for employees and surrounding population which is mandatory under the law. Now come to the discuss, now discuss about biological disasters. Biological disaster is a devastating caused by an enormous spread of a certain kind of living organisms that may be the spread of a disease, virus or an epidemic. It can also be sudden growth in the population of a certain kind of plant or animals example a locust plague. It may be described as a disaster caused due to natural outbreak of epidemics or intentional use of biological agents through dissemination of microorganism or toxin is food or toxins in food or water or insect vector or by aerosol to harm human population, food crops and livestock to cause outbreaks of disease. 
Biological agents are living organisms or they are toxic products that can kill or incapacitate or injure people, livestock and plant. Biological weapons are referred to as a poor man's bomb because they are easy to manufacture, can be deployed without sophisticated delivery systems and have the ability to kill or injure hundreds of people. Some devices such as crop dusting, airplanes or small perfume atomizer are effective delivery systems for biological agents. What is the epidemic? Epidemic is an occurrence of illness or other health related event affecting a larger population. Epidemics pose a major risk of, to the health and welfare of global human and animal populations. The staggering impact on a population can be both direct and indirect. Human populations are directly at risk from infection and indirectly at risk through the impact on their food supply. The risk associated with food supply include the economic losses related to the culling of animals and the unavailability of food caused by real or suspected contamination. In addition, epidemics have the potential to severely disrupt global supply chains and further harm human health. An epidemic's impact on the economy can vary based on its imminent and long-term severity. This is influenced by the rate of hospitalization, insurance premiums, outpatient visit, and the large contributor death. Now come to the causes of epidemics. It is poor sanitation, seasonal changes, poverty and overcrowding, and vectors. Now come to the effects of epidemics. Epidemic may cause mass illness or death. There are secondary effects such as disruption in the society and economic losses. Vulnerability is high among those who are poorly nourished, people living in a unhygienic in sanitary condition, poor quality of water supply, lack of access to health services. Now come to the management of epidemics. Preventive public health measures needs to be strengthened. Personal pro protection through vaccination is an effective mitigation measure. Improvement of sanitary conditions, fumigation of vector breeding sites, and proper disposal of domestic and municipal waste greatly reduce chances of epidemic spread of diseases. Contingency plan for dealing with the epidemics that are likely to occur in the region. Early warning system and regular surveillance are primary requirements so as to mount an effective control response in early stages to prevent any outbreaks. Now we will discuss some common diseases that may reach epidemic proportions are described. First one is dengue. Dengue is also called breakbone fever or dandy fever. It is an acute infectious mosquito borne hemorrhagic fever. Beside fever, the disease is characterized by an extreme pain and stiffness of the joints, hence the name breakbone fever. Dengue is caused by a virus transmitted through a mosquito called Aedes aegypti or Asian tiger mosquito. A mosquito becomes infected only it, it bites and infect infected individuals or humans during the first three days of the victim's illness. It then requires 8 to 11 days to incubate the virus before the disease can be transmitted to another individual. Thereafter, the mosquito remains infected for life. The virus is injected into the skin of the victim. There is no specific therapy. Therefore, attention is focused on preventive measures involving mosquito control, the only effective way to prevent spread of dengue. Next one is HIV or AIDS, human immune virus HIV and AIDS acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. The com most common methods of transmission of HIV are unprotected sex with an infected partner, sharing needles with infected person, infection from blood transfusion or transmission with infected mother to fetus. The year 2001 was the 20th anniversary of the initial reports of a mysterious dreadly immune system disorder that came to be known as AIDS. 
the disease epidemic that had killed more than 21 million people in the world. In 2001, an estimated 36 million people were living with HIV infection. This disease is caused by virus called HIV, which is mostly transmitted through sexual union and blood transmission. Third one is mad cow disease. Bovine spongiform encephalopathy or mad cow disease in cattle is caused by an infectious agent that has a long incubation period between 2 and 5 years. Death usually follows, death usually follows within a year of the onset of symptom. No treatment or palliative measures are known. First recognized in cattle in the United Kingdom in 1986, mad cow disease became epidemic there, particularly in southern England. After the emergence of mad cow disease, concern grew over a possible relationship between the animal disease and the occurrence of brain fever disease in men, possibly due to consumption of infected beef. We have given an idea about natural disasters, man-made disasters, as well as biological disaster during this program. Now we will discuss about community level disaster management. At the time of disasters, various agencies such as government, NGO and communities play an important role for disaster management it has four basic component. First one preparedness, second response, third recovery and fourth one is prevention. Community participation has been recognized as the additional element in disaster management necessary to reverse the worldwide trend of exponential increase in disaster occurrence, loss from small and medium scale disasters, build a culture of safety and ensure sustainable development for all. Community preparedness can be thought for of as the advanced capacity of the community to respond to the consequences of an adverse event by having plans in place so that people know what to do and where to go if a warning is issued or a hazard is observed. Good practices in the community based approaches to disaster mitigation highlight factors such as tapping traditional organizational structures and mechanisms including formal and informal community leaders and capability building activities with the community disaster committees and volunteers. The importance of various forms and channels of public awareness and education using local dialects, values and culture and partnership of the community with various stakeholders such as community based organizations, community leaders, local government units, high level government NGOs, less vulnerable group and donor is important. Benefit of the community based approaches to disaster mitigation are community first one, community process and participation built confidence, pride that they are able to make a difference and capabilities to pursue disaster mitigation and preparedness and bigger development responsibility at the local level. This leads to empowerment. Community involvement in risk assessment and risk reduction plan leads to ownership commitment that is second and individual and concerted actions in disaster mitigation including resource mobilization. Trusting and supporting the capacity building processes results in a wide range of appropriate and doable mitigation solutions. Community based disaster mitigation is cost effective, self help and sustainable even if it, it is time consuming. Government initiative on disaster management. National Committee on Disaster Management set up under chairmanship of Prime Minister. UNDP also support government initiatives. Program components are develop of state and district disaster management plans, development of disaster risk management and response plan at village, board, gram panchayat, block, urban or local body levels, constitution of disaster management team and the committees at all levels with adequate re representation of women in all communities and team. Capacity building of disaster management team at all levels, special training for women in first aid, shelter management, water and sanitation, rescue and evacuation, etc. Capacity building in cyclone and earthquake resistance features for houses in disaster prone districts, training in retrofitting and construction of technology demonstration units. 
integration of disaster management plan with development plans of local self government the first few hours before and after a disaster are critical and precious for saving lives and reducing further injuries often external help may take time to reach the disaster site in any disaster often the neighbors are first to respond the first responders are people who act first in the disaster situation usually they lack basic response skills to deal medical or other emergencies the aim of community level management is to train the individual and the member of local community to deal with emergency situation effectively trained communities members are life saving asset in such situations thus community level management involve people's participation before we wrap up we would like to recap the main points that is what you have learnt fires are events of something burning on is often destructive taking up toll of life and property it is observed that more people die in fire than in cyclone earthquake floods and other natural disasters combined accident on road rail and air also take a major toll on life and property following regulations can prevent majority of such accidents epidemics of various diseases occur mostly due to ignorance if proper mass awareness program are conducted for the people a majority of them can be avoided community level participation in disaster management is very useful as they are the first responder government of india is conducting several initiatives in order to involve public at various levels in order to implement the disaster management plan effectively dear learners this is all about lesson 12 disasters and their management part 2 we will come again to meet you with a new program pop environmental science thank you